Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now when I saw the Elden Ring system requirements I was pretty certain that any hopes I'd had of running it with integrated graphics were dashed but here we are. I've got to admit that I didn't think this was my sort of game at first and then I saw a couple of reviews and thought yeah this is a must buy. Elden Ring has me asking the same question to myself that I often pondered over when I spent a month in Australia and that question is why is nearly every living thing trying to kill me? As with all of these no graphics card videos, I'm showcasing gameplay from pretty early on to avoid potential spoilers, therefore I should state that the performance you're seeing here might not be representative of what you can expect throughout the entirety of the game. But this should still give you a pretty good idea of the general performance a lot of the time. My first test system consists of the i3-12300, 16 gigs of 3200MHz DDR4, and nothing but the integrated UHD 730 graphics. Intel's onboard display solutions have come an incredibly long way, and while they're still not perfect in terms of driver support with other occasional issues sometimes cropping up, they are definitely usable. For example, Far Cry 6, we're getting a bit off subject now, uh, Far Cry 6 still has a few display problems like strange flickering and some odd lighting behaviour, stuff that could certainly be worked out with updates, but it was that past experience that made me wonder if we'd see similar issues here. I know the games aren't related, but with the knowledge that these UHD graphics don't always um, behave themselves, I guess I get a bit concerned whenever I jump into any big AAA release. Thankfully, all seems pretty well here, though I did notice a couple of graphical glitches with a sudden blue and green light shooting across the screen on a one-off occasion. I'm not quite sure what that was, and I'm not quite sure if it will be picked up in this footage, but after half an hour of gameplay, I only noticed it happen once, in an indoor area, I should add. As you can probably guess, we're using the lowest settings at 720p resolution. Now the game does actually offer an 800x600 option, but that's best saved for when 1280x720 can't hit anywhere near 30fps. There's also an option to auto-detect the best rendering settings, which I think changes the graphical options depending on the performance, but considering that we're using low anyway, it might not be of any help, unless it does something to the resolution scaling. I, I don't think it does, but I left it turned on anyway. During this first test, anti-aliasing was also set to high because the difference in performance between low, high and off don't really change much as far as the frame rate is concerned. But each setting does make a noticeable difference to the visuals and the edges of pretty much everything benefit from having this set to high. Now it's easy to get carried away in the excitement of this game running with an onboard GPU but it isn't a completely solid experience as I'm sure you expected me to say. I think that's to be expected to be honest and there can certainly be some pretty hefty dips here and there. It's not by any means a constantly stuttery experience though, in fact it's more solid than I thought it would be. I did stumble upon a few locations that saw us drop into the mid 20 FPS range and even lower but these dips happened just as quickly as I got wiped out so I didn't really have a chance to notice the frame rate counter. At the time of this video's creation the current version of Elden Ring is 1.02 so things may change along with future updates and patches. I don't think it's worth using 900p or 1080p instead here as a native resolution because this will mean a sub 30 FPS experience a lot more of the time, and an average that sits somewhere in the mid to low 20s, especially if you're using 1920 by 1080. With that said, I'm pretty happy and surprised by the i3's performance, and I'll be keeping an eye on how things progress as it's still early days for this title, but now I have some not so good news. This is all the footage I have from the AMD Athlon 3000G. It seems that no matter what I do, be it use new or older drivers, overclock or leave the CPU and GPU at stock, swap out the memory, you name it, there is nothing that I didn't try to get this to not freeze, but unfortunately, be it loading a save game or starting a new game, Elden Ring worked for a few seconds with the plucky Athlon, but ultimately froze. 
I'm not sure why, and it looks as though 30 FPS may have been within reach, but I'll just have to keep an eye on updates and see if things change. Perhaps it's the two physical processor cores, or maybe a future AMD driver update could fix this, but as soon as I can play it with this chip, I'll bring you a video. Thankfully, this isn't the only AMD APU setup I have access to today. I also tried this at 800 by 600 by the way, as a last result, and the same thing happened. My 8-core AMD Ryzen 7 4700U laptop with its integrated Radeon GPU is up next. This machine is what I primarily use for editing on the go, and for this test I have it plugged in with the maximum performance mode enabled. Now I'm not sure just how much difference this makes, but it's generally a decent performer at lower resolutions, and that seems to be the case to some degree here as well. This laptop originally had 8 gigs of DDR4, but I've since upgraded it so it has 16 gigs of 3200 MHz memory in dual channel mode. That's two 8 gig modules. It's a similar story to that of the i3 desktop rig, and that is, while the average frame rates sit at over 30, the percentile numbers reflect the occasional dip and drop that was not only picked up by the software but very much felt, especially in combat heavy scenes. It's hard to be disappointed or concerned by this though, again we're using onboard graphics and nothing else. I always go into these videos expecting very little in return, so when we do manage to hit even 30 FPS, well, I've got to say, it's a welcome result. The i3, I think, definitely did better in terms of consistency today. Um, it is the better processor. Those Golden Cove cores really are quite special. As for the integrated graphics, though, I'm not sure which is better between the Radeon onboard graphics and the UHD 730. It's probably the uh, Radeon graphics, but it all depends on which processor they're actually paired with. And the desktop AMD APU counterparts tend to do quite a bit better. I'll have to look at getting a 5600G or 5700G for future tests. Overall, Elden Ring is a tough game that's not all that tough to run with integrated graphics, providing you don't mind lower resolutions and in cases like this, the absolute lowest settings, albeit apart from anti-aliasing. Indoor areas will perform better and more consistently, but traversing the incredible open world landscape, and you can expect a few more nasty surprises. And I'm not just talking about the in-game enemies. Hey, there is always 800 by 600 resolution, if you want to ensure even less dips below 30, and I can only praise the developers for including this option, as I'm sure it will help some people out, at least until they can find a graphics card. I've read many reports of performance issues too, so I'd like to reiterate that as things are patched, the ability of these iGPUs is subject to change, but I'll keep you all posted on any significant developments, and this probably isn't the last time you're going to see these chips tested with this game. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Elden Ring running with nothing but integrated graphics. If you did, leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, let me know how this game runs on your system, and if it runs surprisingly well, let me know what hardware you're using too. Thank you, and I'll see all of you in the next one.